you know, as a musician, you don't you don't grow up as fast as other people. <laughs> so it's like uh, there's part of you that always feels like you're you're 18 and you're confused and whatever, and everything means so much. And, it, and that's one of the best things of writing is you can like take possession of all the parts of your life. You know, they're yours forever. Like I, I went and visited um, New Hampshire, that camp I worked at, uh, like maybe a year ago. And I sort of expected I might go on some kind of melancholy trip of like I'm not young anymore, you know, I'm not that age anymore, I can't do that anymore. But instead I felt this kind of ownership of all the phases of my life and a real gratitude for it. So, but that's really one of the fun things of writing fiction is that you can, you can revisit anything. I could write my next book about when I, you know, a four-year-old, and I could probably tap back into that pretty easily. You know, it's like a, that's the cool challenge I think of writing fiction. So I think I'll just read a couple of passages if I could to start things off. Okay, I sort of like this part where um, uh, Finbar and Ransom go to the dance in the first chapter. I went to Grove City College, uh, which Harrison was based upon, and Grove City is very strict, almost like comically strict, and sort of famous for its silly rules. And, uh, but it's the kind of place that you sort of loved to hate, <laughs> but you loved it. Uh, so Finbar convinces Ransom to go to a dance, which is uh, very un-Ransom-like. Um, we stood in the corner drunken wallflowers, and I scanned the floor for faces I recognized. In my head, I converted the small, square directory pictures to life-size and searched for matches. I was really looking for Lynn Cusimano, English major, Toledo, Ohio, with whom I had actually spoken one day as we left the religious philosophy class we shared. She was the current leader in the race to be my soulmate. I spotted her dancing with a female friend in the middle of the crowded room. When the next slow song began, I made my move. I tapped her on the shoulder, interrupting her conversation, and asked, can I have this dance? Why, certainly, she replied, her face beaming with friendliness. About halfway through the song, we seemed to instinctively pull each other closer. I closed my eyes and breathed in the smell of her hair, herbal essence. <laughs> Is that still a shampoo now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The song ended and Lynn asked, can we step outside for a minute? This was going even better than I'd hoped. St standing in the cool night air, I gazed into her almond eyes awaiting her cue. After what seemed an eternity, she said, have you been drinking, Finbar? It gets fuzzy after that. She became the missionary and I the unconverted native. I mostly tuned out her speech, which revolved around her God and her values and the dangers of alcohol and the fact that I had held her too closely it became the sound the TV makes when a station runs a test of the emergency broadcasting system. Finally, sensing a pause that might have been a conclusion, I said, I'm sorry, Lynn. I did have a little too much to drink tonight. It won't happen again. <laughs>